So the mental health professionals to me look a lot like financial professionals, which is, I'll bet if you were, a fi- if you were yourself a mental health professional, you would think that your own, uh, your own industry was bullshit. Prove me wrong. Find somebody who works currently in that industry and have a private conversation with them. Because I did that with somebody in the financial advice industry, and they told me flat out. Now, the advice I give my clients I would never use for myself. Flat out. No, not even shaded a little bit. No, it's, it's basically a fake industry. Yeah. All right. All um, right. Uh, I know you don't want me to, but there's something we need to say about yay. Can you handle it? A little, little bit? All right. Let me give you a little uh, walk in the park of the history of yay. And I want to see if, if you can put all of these little pieces together into anything that feels like a pattern. See if you can find the pattern. Okay. So, you remember when uh, Ye interrupted Taylor Swift's uh, award-winning thing, and he got up there, and instead of letting the award ceremony progress in its normal way, he got up there and said, probably the main thing you should not say in that situation, (laughs) which is somebody else should have won this award. Right? Would you agree that whatever else it was, and you'll have lots of descriptions of how bad it was, would you agree that he shouldn't have said it? Can you all give me that? It was something that very specifically you should not have said, even if you believed it, you shouldn't say it out loud in public. Yeah. So that happened. Do you know what uh, Ye was criticized for when he was just doing music? Do you remember what the biggest criticism of Ye was when he was just the artist doing music? Anybody remember? Because it's weird that you forgot. His songs were insanely misogynistic, said his critics. Insanely misogynistic. Now, who thinks that in the last 20 years you could be a, a public personality and talk shit about women and you could get away with it. So he said a lot of the stuff you're not supposed to say about women, right? So he did that. And, and really, like, who, who goes after women like, and just insults them and makes money on it? Well, rappers. So he comes from a world in which saying the thing you're not supposed to say is exactly your job, right? Do you think rappers say what is socially acceptable? I feel like the essence of rap is saying things that would be uncomfortable for the people in charge. <laughs> things about you know, women, things about their th- feelings about police, maybe um, praising bad behavior, illegal behavior, that sort of thing. So rap, by its nature, is artists who are saying the most dangerous things that you're specifically not supposed to say. So that's part of the context. Now let's move on. Do you remember? Of course you do. When Ye said he likes Trump, wasn't that the one thing that a black man couldn't say in public at the time without huge consequences? It was. It was like the most dangerous thing a black man could say. And he said it over and over again. Do you remember when uh, Ye went on... uh, um, I forget which show. You'll tell me which show because I'm blanking. And he said that uh, slavery, the history of slavery, he said there were so many more slaves than there were masters at the time. He said that slavery looks like a choice. Remember what happened when he said slavery looks like a choice? He basically insulted all of black America and much of white America and everybody else who might be supportive. And he said the worst thing you could say about black America. Like, I don't think you could have said a worse thing about black Americans. And did he say, I'm only talking about some black people? 
when, when he said that? When, when he was being misogynistic, did he say, whoa, 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 hold on, no. I'm not talking about women. I'm not talking about bitches, you know, to use his word. I'm talking about some individual women who have behaviors I don't like. Did he ever clarify that? I don't, I don't think so. When he talked about black people must have been a choice to slavery, did he say some of those black people must have treated it like a choice? He didn't. He, didn't. he treated it like black people or like a group that act together. Very offensive, wouldn't you say? Very offensive. Yeah. It was the worst thing you could say in that situation. Um, when Ye made a turn toward being super religious, and suddenly he wasn't that, that edgy rapper, he was the super religious guy, did it ever occur to you that that was like the most dangerous thing that Ye could do? The, one of the most dangerous things you could have done, say two years ago, was to come out as super uh, Christian and conservative, family conservative religious. It was just about the most dangerous thing you could say in public, if you think about it, right? especially from where he was coming from. Most dangerous thing you could say. Uh, when he wore the uh, White Lives Matter shirt with Candace Owens, wasn't that the worst thing you could say in public about that time? It was the most controversial worst thing you could say. Yeah. Now, did he say that um, some White Lives Matter and some do not? I don't remember. I think he, he treated white people like they were like one unit. But we're not, right? We're not one unit. There must be some white people that don't matter, <laughs> you know, like serial killers and stuff. But yet he treated us all like we're just one unit. Very unfair. So he's treated women as if they're like one thing. Very offensive. Treated... Um, he treated uh, white people like one unit. He treated black people like they're one group. Um, and then he got to uh, the Jews are trying to stop him from being successful. Wow. Third rail. It's the worst thing you could say in public and expect to get away with it. Right? Worst thing you could say. And he treated all Jews like it's like one group of people, when in fact we knew that just some specific individuals he had a problem with. Very unacceptable, treating an entire group as if they're one thing. And then he took it up a level. He said, uh, I see good things about Hitler. Well, that's something you can't say. What is the worst thing you could say, the one thing nobody can say in public? Hitler has some good sides. You can't say that. It's the thing you can't say, even with free speech, you can't say that. And then he teamed up with uh, Nick Fuentes and said, you know, Nick's great. Oh, you can't do that. You cannot do that. And then he started to work with uh, Milo Yiannopoulos. You can't do that. that. No, no. You cannot say there's anything good with Milo, because if you do, it would feel like you're supporting pedophiles, wouldn't it? Even though Milo is not um, accused of pedophilia, he is accused of something that has a different word, but people confuse with pedophilia. So he, I think he was talking about older, older teens, which technically is not pedo, but everybody sees it that way. Right? So I'm not, I'm not making that distinction. I'm saying that Ye would know that people won't make that distinction. So associating with Milo put him in that sort of little supportive of a pedophile. Do you know what you can't say? You can never say anything, anything that's even slightly supportive of a pedophile. So what do you say about Balenciaga when they were accused of being a pedophile organization? He defended them. Not the specific photo shoot, but he defended the company that is not defending itself from pedophilia. They're not defending themselves. Let me say it again. Balenciaga never said how the photo shoot happened and therefore explained why they're not really guilty. They never did. But Ye defended 
the group that is accused of being pedophile-friendly. Do you know what you can't do? You can't do that. But he did it. Here's the pattern. Have you picked it up yet? Do you see the pattern? And then another hint came when I watched some more of the uh, like behind the scenes of Ye's visit to uh, Alex Jones. And you see Nick Fuentes defending Ye's uh, treatment of, quote, the Jews as like one group of people he has trouble with. And here's what Fuentes said. We're okay treating every other group as one group. To which I said, hey, ah, that's so wrong in ways I can't quite articulate. No, no, Nick Fuentes, you fucking racist. You... But your examples are pretty good. But that's wrong. That's so wrong. Except, makes you think, doesn't it? (laughs) Makes you think. Now, if anybody is new to my live stream, I don't like Hitler completely. Like, I, I hate his fucking little mustache. I hate the lint in his fucking pocket. He's all bad. Because I know what to say in public. Right? It's not hard. Now, here's, here's the question that's going to blow your fucking head off. You ready? You ready for this? Let's accept that uh, Ye has some uh, mental conditions. Maybe he's, you know, maybe he's uh, you know, bipolar, maybe he's something else. Do you think that any of the mental conditions that Ye is accused of would make him incapable of knowing what things to say to make him popular with the public and what things to say that would make him very unpopular with the public. Do you think he can't tell the difference between saying the right thing and saying the thing that will absolutely get you in trouble? Do you think he can't tell the difference? <clears throat> Somebody says yes, that, it, that if it's mania... If he's in the mania phase, he can't tell the difference. I would think the mania phase means he's not afraid of uh, consequences. I don't think it makes you unable to see what's right in front of you. So here's my take. It seems deeply unlikely that he was surprised by any of the reactions to any of the things I mentioned. Do you think he was surprised by any of it? No. No. Do you think he would know exactly what to say and do if he wanted to get back into the good graces of the public? Of course. Of course. We all do. It's not not like it's a hard question. It would be the easiest question in the world. Just say you didn't mean any of those things, apologize for it, do some good works for people you might have hurt, that sort of thing. Now, what about the, uh, the perfectly valid complaint from the Jewish community that Ye's rhetoric puts an extra risk on Jews. True or false? The way Ye talks makes them feel uncomfortable and adds some extra risk to their life. True. True. Absolutely true. Now let's let's go full Nick Fuentes and compare that to everybody else talking about anything. Do you think that the way the Democrats talk about me puts me at greater risk of literally being killed? Yes or no? Is the way they talk about me on social media every day put me at risk of physical danger? Yes, yes. Absolutely. (laughs) Have you ever seen me say that uh, they need to stop doing that because it's putting me in physical danger? Have I ever said that? You need to stop using your free speech because it puts me in physical danger. I've noted that it does. I've noted that it does. But that's different than saying they need to stop it. Right? Not once. No. Um, when, uh, when Ye said white lives matter, was he putting himself at greater physical risk? Of course he was. Of course he was. And also the people who supported him. Did he put Candace Owens at greater physical risk by you know, associating her with that message? Yes, yes. I mean, she already puts herself at great risk. By the way, Candace Owens is one of the bravest people 
you know, in the public realm. Like, she is brave. Like, you gotta, you gotta give her that. Um, so look at the big picture. Number one, how many of you saw the behind-the-scenes video of Ye preparing his little mask uh, and his routine for Alex Jones? If you watched him preparing for it, you saw somebody who did not look crazy at all. And as he was talking about wearing the mask, he was completely aware that that would make it impossible to ignore. He, he went full rock star, full Trump, and he said, all right, if you're going to cut me off from social media, I will become impossible to ignore, and then I'm going to go on there and say the most outrageous thing anybody ever said, and let's, let's see what happens. Here's another clue. Uh, Ali Alexander, who's also associated now with, with Ye, um, he said on that video specifically that they were uh, breaking the Overton window. Uh, I may be saying it wrong. But the Overton window is basically the idea that you could keep your, um, your critics or your enemies in a state of continuous spinning if you keep doing one more outrageous thing after another. They can't settle on the last outrageous thing. They have to keep up with you. So it's sort of what Trump did. All of his individual uh, you know, statements that could have ended anybody else didn't end Trump because he was already on to the next statement. And that was controversial too. And then the next one. Right? So now that you know the following things that maybe you didn't put together. Number one... Kanye and his group are specifically and overtly talking about the Overton window. Everything they're doing supports that theory of operation. There's no way I could possibly believe that Ye was not completely aware of all of the reactions he would get from beginning to end. Everybody would know the reaction. Everybody. Here's what I think he's up to. And he might pull it off. I don't know. Now, and, and again, if you're, not, if you're new to my live stream, uh, I'm not supporting Ye. And I said this yesterday, I think. Ye is making himself unlikable, and I accept that. So I don't like him. Right? I would like him if he said nice things about the Jewish community. I would like him more. I would like him if he were, you know, said things that I could embrace without being embarrassed. I'd like that. That'd be cool. But uh, here's what I think he's up to. I think he's breaking your brain. And he's getting very close to succeeding. Because you, you, you can't tell where that breaking point is, because he's, he's bending us, and we're bending and bending and bending. It's not until you see the whole portfolio of what he's done in the last few years that you see he is intentionally finding the most challenging thing you could hold in your mind and then making you deal with it. Now, I've said before that Ye is not somebody who just creates art. He is living art. Everything he does pushes, pushes or challenges you to reconsider the way you were thinking of things. Right? Everything we're watching is a challenge to the old way you were thinking. From, from the very beginning of what is an award show, right? The, mo- the most basic thing that nobody would question is, what is an award show? Well, it's where somebody gets an award and they say thank you and everybody claps. And then Ye said, how about this is an award show? How about not? How about I go up there and make it a different show? And then he did. <laughs> so if you look at the whole portfolio, it looks a lot less crazy And it looks like an artist who is breaking all of our expectations about what artists can do, who can say what. And he has broken maybe the most important uh, barrier that we have for getting together, which is we're not allowed to say what we think. We're not allowed to say what we think. And until we're allowed to say what we think, we'll never come together. The country can never come together if we can't talk and say what we actually think. Right? As bad as it is. Because right? lots of times we think pretty ugly things. 
Ye is just breaking all of the rules. He's just showing you you can say everything you want to say as long as you're willing to pay for it with everything. (laughs) Now, let's double back to something that you really don't see coming. You ready for this? When Ye said that uh, there were so many more slaves than white people who were trying to control them back in slavery, he said that it looked like a choice. And then all historians, and especially black historians, said, whoa, 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 whoa. That was no fucking choice. You know, the, the group that had the weapons would have just you know, slaughtered us. Right? Here's what I think Ye would have said, just speculating based on all, everything that he's done so far. I think he'd say, right. How, how does that affect my point? Right, they would have slaughtered him. And they also probably would have ended up winning. They might have lost 90% of their numbers, but they could have ended up winning because they had the numbers. You know, they, they just had to attack where the weapons were and get the weapons and then, you know. So if you ask me... Ye's original controversial point that the slaves could have rebelled if they wanted to badly enough, he basically proved by destroying his own career to win back freedom of speech for himself. He basically demonstrated what he thought the slaves at the time should have done, which is risk everything for their freedom. And reasonable people said, no, you don't risk it everything for your freedom, you risk what makes sense. And the A was saying, no, for freedom, you'd risk everything. And so when it came to his own freedom in the United States, can he say whatever he wants to say, no matter how ugly it is? Can a man who feels, and this is his own feeling, this is not my interpretation, can a man who feels that some identifiable group seems to be ganging up on him, can he say it? Does he have the right to be wrong? Does he have the right to say something that could put people at risk? He's fighting for that right. And what he traded for that right was everything. He traded everything for it. Now, if you don't think this is one of the greatest shows you've ever seen, you're not seeing the pattern. If you look at any individual thing he, he says we're supposed to be outraged by it. You're part of the performance. Right? You're not an observer. You're part of the performance. Your outrage is part of the act. So when he says Hitler has some good things about him, I say, God damn you, yay. God damn you. I'm sorry, I don't want to use the Lord's name in vain. <laughs> I know some of you get triggered by that, and I didn't mean to do it. So... I don't support him because that's his message. (laughs) His message to me is don't support me, right? Because he basically said things I can't agree with and I'm not going to agree with. So I don't support him. But watching watching this play out is fucking amazing. Now, you want some more um, mind benders? I got more. Do you think he can make his money back? Do you think he could ever make his money back? Well, one of his projects, which is still live, unless something's changed recently, is you know he had intended to build uh, communities that were designed communities so they'd be better places to live, and it would solve you know a number of problems that our current social situation doesn't solve. Now uh, he's only been messing around with prototypes. But you know the size of that market is bigger than all the things he's ever done. The potential size of that is is basically Elon Musk-sized opportunity. And nobody's nobody's really competing. Because other people who want to build homes are just going to be home builders and they would build something boring that didn't move your soul. Yay, potentially, potentially, could bring what he's brought to other fields to the housing field and make you excited about it. And then suddenly, every community he builds or license, he makes $100 million. 
<laughs> and, you know, 100 million here, 100 million there, it adds up over time. You know, he could be the richest man in America in 20 years. And it's because he's entered the market that would allow that to happen, and he's the right person for it. He's the right person for the market. <clears throat> so, here's the other possibility. You know that, in my opinion, Trump has become um, not viable. Is there any way that Ye could come back from all of this? Could he come back from the things he said? Could he get back into the public good graces? Nobody else could, but he could. <laughs> he could. Yep. Now, I'm not going to predict that he will. I'm just going to say I look at his talent stack, and I look at what, what you would call his mental illness or whatever's going on there, and I don't see that's going to stop him. It doesn't look like that would stop him. He knows exactly what it would take. Right? Don't you think he knows what it would take? Because he knew exactly what would get him in trouble. You don't think there was any surprise about that? He knew exactly what he was doing. You don't think he knows exactly how to get out of it? Let me tell you how. Do you think I could model it? Do you think I could give you a thing he could say that would just totally get him out of, the, out of trouble? I think he could. Here, here's me modeling it. You know, um, I think that my comments about the Jews were out of place, and I was acting on my feelings at the time. However, the bigger issue is can people say what they feel when they feel it and still survive in this country? Because we can't have a country if I can't say something out of anger and still have a job. And I'd like that for you as well. I want us all to live in a country where we can say what we want to say and we'll figure out a way to be okay with it. We shouldn't be doing things that make it too dangerous for other people, but be aware that all speech comes with a little bit of danger. Right? It's, it's built into free speech. You can't make it go away. You, you've watched me say every possible thing that you're not supposed to say, and so far I'm still alive. Free speech won't kill you. I just proved it. Now, can we stop saying bad things about each other as a group? Can, can you join me and let's not treat black people like they're one group, or white people like they're one group, or Jews like they're one group, or Christians like they're one group? Can we just stop doing it? Because I'll go first. I'll go first. Now, if he said that, and you said to yourself, huh, he actually sounds like he means it. He actually, I, I could hear his actual regret in the way he phrased it. He's giving us a reason why it happened. He was upset about his situation. He's, he's told you what he's going to do to correct it. And then he, he tried to bring you to a, a higher ground where we all don't have that problem and we don't have that kind of problem with each other. And we figure out how to talk while being a little bit offensive because that's just how talking works. <laughs> now, you don't think he could sell that? Again, I'm not predicting he will try to do anything like that because he's hard to predict, right? You can't really predict him. If you could predict him, he wouldn't be A. But he could. Now, when I said that, did you say to myself, oh, my God, that will never work? Nobody would ever accept that? Uh, have you ever heard the... Uh, well, there's a couple of analogies that come to mind. Um, if, if you've ever worked at a restaurant, you know, or any retail, you know that the following thing is true. The best way to get a repeat customer is ha- have a bad experience for your customer, and then they complain, and then you fix it. If, for example, you go to a restaurant and something was wrong and they comp you the meal, your odds of eating there again are pretty high. You know, if it's a good restaurant, you just had one little issue, right? So, yeah. Um, we do have a soft spot as humans for people who admit their mistake and try to fix it. 
In fact, that's some of our favorite people. Uh, a lot of movies and books are about somebody who is flawed, and in the process of the movie, they redeem themselves. Right? The, the redemption story is one of our strongest, most built-in you know, narratives that run our, run our lives. So if he could turn into the reformed person who becomes the, the story of who you don't want to be or becomes the, the reason that we should you know, value free speech or, or something like that, you, you could imagine he could make it work. You could imagine. That, does it blow your mind that he's a black man who says uh, white lives matter and he's working with uh, Nick Fuentes? And Milo, doesn't it look like he chose he chose his group to be the most offensive group he possibly could? And Ali Alexander was one of the organizers of the January six event. He's not charged with anything because he didn't do anything illegal. Um, but still, his name is associated with that, right? Doesn't it look like he intentionally chose the least um, publicly acceptable people? But here's the weird thing. They're not all the same person. So he's got, you know, a person of color, a person who's gay, a person who's, you know, the, the most extreme right-wing person. I mean, he's, he's really got a little pirate... Yeah, it's a pirate ship. He's a little pirate ship. Do you know what makes people comfortable? People get comfortable when they see that you're the captain of a pirate ship. Because they go, well... He's not going to kick me out for being weird because I'm just a pirate. Like, all the pirates are different. One has one leg, one has one leg. But we're all just pirates. You know, the, the, the pirate ship um, metaphor or analogy, I forget which, it would be a good way to bring the country together, wouldn't it? You know, instead of saying you're a bad pirate and I'm a good pirate, how about just saying, you know, we're all kind of pirates, but we're on the same ship? That's what I liked about Trump. Uh, you know, of course, his critics said, oh, you're a big racist. But he had no problem hanging out with literally anybody. Right? If you look at the people Trump has personally associated with, it was everybody. And no limits at all. I love that. Uh, the, the people I'm worried about is people hanging around with people who look like them. And I'm not comfortable with that. What is One Piece? I don't know what that is. Uh, are you giving him the benefit... Talk about Ye. Am I giving Ye the benefit of a doubt and assuming his attentions are good? Uh, yes. Yes, I am doing that explicitly. I'm assuming that Ye's intentions are good. Because I also believe that his religious faith is real. Does anybody doubt his religious faith? That's a lot of work. I mean, if that's a... If that's a trick, it's a lot of work to put into a trick. No, I think he's, I think he's completely sincere about the religion stuff, which suggests he's sincere about creating a better world. He's just doing it in a way that we've never seen anybody do anything, well, unless you think Trump did. All right. Um, now, is there any way that I can say what I've said without getting smeared by the left? I think they'll probably drag me now, won't they? Do you think I'll get dragged by this afternoon? Because I think, I think the media is desperately looking for somebody who makes a mistake of defending Ye, right? Like the classic trap is the first person who, who looks like they're defending him is going to get dragged in so that you know not to defend him. That's how it's played. Now, I don't know if I, can, uh, if I can avoid that by saying I dislike him because he has gone out of his way to make all of us dislike him. So I accept, I accept his message. All right. Uh, yeah, the locals is our pirate ship. <laughs> Chew that. Scott, your struggles are unsurcomp. Okay. Um, my comp? <laughs> oh, my struggle. I got it. Got it. It took me a while to put that together. Um, he's trying to destroy his brand? I don't know. I mean, he's already done that. 
<laughs> uh, something wrong. There's an article already about me. Is there already a hit piece on me yet? Has anybody seen a hit piece on me yet? Probably. There should be one by the end of today. That would be the normal thing. But I think they'll probably just keep Ye out of the news. Now, here's, here's the other possibility. Do you think Ye would run as a Democrat or a Republican? Because he hasn't said, right? What do you think? I feel like he's going to have to start his own party, isn't he? Because he already said he's the birthday party or something. Yeah, he's the birthday party. I don't know what you have to do to officially be a new political party, but... But uh, who would Ye take more votes away from? Democrats or Republicans? Who would Ye take more votes away from? You think he could, could get black votes? After he said white lives matter? I think you're right. <laughs> I, think he, I think he could pull more away from the Democrats, which would make him the Joe Manchin of presidential candidates. In other words, Joe Manchin, just by being the one person, or one of two, who can go back and forth on an issue, gets to decide all our legislation. So maybe Ye could run for office and know that his, his involvement would change the, the result. What do you think the Democrats would be willing to offer him to stop running? <laughs> They might fund his yay community <laughs> just to get him out of the race. I don't know. Could be interesting. But, ladies and gentlemen, that is all I have for now for the public presentation. So I'm going to say uh, uh, good night to, or good day, good day to YouTube and Spotify and Rumble. And I'm going to talk to the locals people privately.